Hello and welcome back to Negapon Gaming. Ever wanted to get tested on your skills as an Uma trainer? No, me neither, but today we're going to be talking about a rerun event in Uma Musume called the Trainer Proficiency Test. In this event, we're going to take on tests that are going to score us based on the resulting Umas that we train. This event is going on for only 5 days, so it's a very short time from the 24th to the 29th, so let's get going. Before we start, do hit that like and subscribe button for more Uma Musume content in the future. I also play other games on Twitch and hang out in my Discord channel. We have a ton of Uma Musume players in there. They're super friendly, so if you want to check out an English community, they're all right in there. The links will be down below. First, let's talk about the rewards for this event. I mean, everyone loves rewards, right? In order to exchange for awesome rewards, we do need something called trial coins. We get trial coins every time we go into training for this event, and they're not very hard to get at all. We just have to train several times to get some trial coins. We've got a bunch of goodies this time, so the first one over here is going to be jewels. We can get up to three stacks of 150, so it'll be 450 in total. We can also get a rainbow shard, and for those that don't know, shards are for limit breaking your cards. So if you collect 20 shards, you can make it into a crystal, and with a rainbow crystal, you can limit break any one of your SSR support cards, and with a gold crystal, you can limit break any one of your SR support cards. The next reward here is a support card gacha ticket. We also have a bunch of hint books and then shards. There's also a bunch of other little things that are not as important that's not pictured here, but for me, um, I would prioritize the jewels, of course, and then the shards, and then the books, the ticket, and then uh, these pieces right here, and then everything else after that is really up to you. I think these are the most important things that are on top of my list. Alright, next, how do we actually play this event? So in the lobby, you'll see this little banner right here, and this banner will let you basically click into the event itself. Here you can see as of recording, there's four days left for this event. And then once you go into training, you'll get this pop-up that says like, do you want to do normal training or do you want to do an exam? Once you choose the trainer exam event, right down here, it'll show you that you're doing the exam and then you can start. Make sure you choose the correct one because if you do the normal mode, you're not going to get any trial coins. You know you got this right because once you go into training, on the top right, you'll see this blue banner. Now let's take a look at the main event page. In the main event page, there's a lot of new buttons going on. So this left one right here is a support card ranking. When we go inside, we can see which support cards have been the most popular that are being used for the event. The second one here is leading Umas. Top scoring Umas will be shown here. What's cool about this leading Umas button is that all the top 30 Umas in this list are gonna be parents that we're gonna be able to borrow. So this is a good chance to make some very powerful Umas. And then on the right here, this is the trial coin exchange. So this is a store that you're going to want to exchange your jewels and shards and books from. This down here is the selected test. Um, there's only one test this time, so you don't have to worry about this so much. Same with this change test button. Since there's only one kind right now, we don't have to worry about this button either. And then lastly, this on the bottom right here goes to training. There's also this button right here for missions. When you click into the test itself, you'll see this pop-up and it's kind of a new one if you've never done this event before. The top right here basically tells you what the exam name is. So this one is the free exam. And then we have the high score. If you've already done a run, it'll show up right here. This is the highest score you've gotten so far on this test. This is your overall score evaluation. So if you get 15,000, you get a passing grade. 20,000 is good, and then 28,000 is excellent. And right here in this small little section that you can scroll, basically what this will tell you is all the score bonus criteria. So if you do the things that are in here, you will get more points overall. And down here, it is basically your clear rewards. So once you clear and pass this test, you will get these items for the first time. These are all the score bonus criterias, but of course, we don't really read Japanese here, so let me do a quick translation for you. Here we are. <laughs> so for every normal skill that you get on this run, you'll get 400 points. Every rare skills, those are the gold ones, you'll get 1,200 points. For every single stat that you get over 1,000, you'll also get 1,500 for each of those. In the training scenario, if you get one win, you get 500 points. Two wins is 1,000. And then if you win completely, is 1,500. So these three all add up. And here we have races. So the more races you do, the more score you're going to get. So it's about winning a ton of races and then also getting a ton of skills. Let's talk about choosing skills for just a little bit. 
Skills that pair well with your aptitude, so like things that you have in S or A, will give you more points for your final evaluation. However, since we're doing this for the test event, let's prioritize just taking as many skills as possible. Take the cheapest ones that you can find, and you know those cheap green skills you see all the time that might not be applicable to what you're trying to do? It doesn't matter. You really want those anyway. They're worth just as much as an expensive skill that might cost 180 this time. So definitely take the ones that are cheapest, especially the ones that you have hint discounts for. Those are really great. Remember that gold skills are worth 1200 and regular skills are worth 400. A normal skill that can upgrade to a gold skill will still only get you 1200 and not the combined 1600. Make sure that you put that into calculation. So for instance, in this case, when we take the first star, it's gonna cost 360 points and it's only gonna get you 1200 score in total. However, if we take some other cheaper skills, even though they're, they're not gold, the three normal skills, they only cost 234 skill points and they are worth 1200 points. Also remember when you're taking skills with circles and double circles, upgrading them to a double circle won't yield more points, so there's really no need to upgrade them. They're totally fine as a single circle skill. After completing a training session, you're going to be able to see how many points you got in total. So in this case, my Taiki shuttle got an excellent score and it's 29,467. On the next page back here, you can see how your score was tallied up. So the top right here is 14,317. That's her evaluation point. So in this case, she's an A plus UMA and this is the score that she normally has. And then everything else that are like races, number of skills she has, uh, if she won Twinkle Star Climax and all that is what added up to 29,000. And at the end down here, this is how many trial coins you got. And then if this is your first time, you'll also see the clear bonus. Now let's talk about the missions for this event. So on the left tab, this is your dailies, the right is limited. So for dailies, uh, this is kind of in reverse order because I cleared one of them already, but normally it would be login first. And this one is to clear the climax training once. For the limited missions now, let's read off the list from top to bottom. So at the top, this one's asking you to get a good evaluation. And then for this one, you'll get a title if you get excellent evaluation. The next one is to clear the climax training twice and then four times, and then finally six times for the 100 jewels. Going further down, we also have a few more missions here. So the top one here is gonna ask you to make an Uma that's C and higher. The next one is to make an Uma that's B and higher, and then B plus and higher, and then finally down here with the 100 jewels is A and higher. So if you make an Uma that's A and higher, you're gonna clear all of these at once. Now for recommendations for this event, if you want some ideas on how to tackle it, my recommendation is this. If you wanna do this, you wanna have horses that have at least two A aptitudes so that they have more race options so you can do more races and get more bonus points from that. Raising horses that are short mile horses with a speed and intelligence build. I also recommend doing builds with guts, uh, with int and or speed. And lastly, dirt racers are not really recommended because they don't have a lot of race options. So in terms of speed and int umas, like I said, you really want umas with two A aptitudes. And let's see, the ones with 20 speed bonuses are going to be Taiki Shuttle, Ogre Cap, and Silent Suzuka. Down here, we also have Sakura Bakushino. The reason why she's down here is because she only has one in A aptitude, and the other aptitude she has in B is Miles. So that's actually pretty easy to fix if you have a parent um, that can give her a little bit of miles to push that up to A. So here's an example of a speed int build. You can do three speed and three int, or you know four speed, two int, or four int, two speed, something like that. Whatever you're comfortable with, this is gonna come out to be pretty good for a speed int Uma. The next recommendation I have is guts int Uma, just because guts int covers a lot of bases in terms of stats. We again want Umas to have two A aptitudes and the ones with 20% guts bonus are going to be Narita Taishin, Rice Shower, and Daiwa Scarlet. Down here we have Gold City and Kawakami Princess. They both have one A aptitude and one B aptitude. Again, if you can get parents to get those B aptitudes up to A, then they're golden. Here's an example of a Guts Int build. So we have four Guts cards here and then one Int card. The last card that you borrow can be Int or Guts, just whatever you're comfortable with. If you've never done a Guts Int build before, I do highly recommend doing uh, four Guts and two Int. 
And then some other variations, it's like if you want to do all five guts, you can try that. The problem here is usually just like your guts will blow out to the max before all the other stats will. But if it will help you understand how guts work, this might be a good way to do it. And the other one is guts speed build. This one is a little bit more balanced, um, but it does lack int, which is where you're going to get a lot of your skill points from aside from races. Int is also really good for recovery between turns, so just whatever you're comfortable with that your playstyle is happy with. I'm also putting in Alcondor Passa and Agnes Digital as well-rounded Umas that can tackle a lot with just a little bit of inheritance. So both of these can take on a lot of different type of races, so if you want to use these two, they're great for that. Alright guys, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks so much for being here with me. I hope you learned something today. Do let me know if you have any questions at all. Go out there and make some awesome umas for this exam. I know you're going to ace it. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch if you want to watch me play some Uma Musume. And also join my Discord if you want to hang out with some other players. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!